rise up. It's time for another episode of Spartivation, your podcast source for inspiration and motivation to get you through your Spartan body transformation. Here now is your host, the Spartan Doctore, Spartan Doctore, champion of growth. It is a glorious day to train and grow. I'm Ryan Masters, a Spartan Doctor, a certified strength and conditioning specialist, here to provide you with motivation and inspiration as you journey through your epic transformation. Welcome to another episode of Spartivation, broadcast directly to you from Trifection Studios. If you find these episodes to be helpful, be sure to leave a review on iTunes or Google Play so I know to produce more of them for you. Today we are continuing our dive into the Spartan Body Blueprint, which you can download for free at Spartivation.com. And we are looking at the third and final component of the Spartan Body Triad, which is 360 degree recovery. Now this poor little component is often forgotten about or given whatever leftover time somebody has when it comes to training. It's really just like, okay, most, most people put it under the umbrella of, all right, I sleep a little bit more if they even pay that much attention to it. and uh, But if you're focused on building muscle, this is a critical, critical area where you want to pay attention and fine-tune in your life so that you can 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x the results and gains that you get from the training that you put in. And again, this all goes back to how we leverage everything that we do so that you're able to build muscle faster and, and keep that Spartan or balanced fitness model physique by training less than five hours a week and you're only going to be able to accomplish that if you if you look at all these areas of your life and make the fine-tuned adjustments needed if you pick and choose and cherry pick it's just you know it's not going to happen because this is an entire system blueprint laid out designed to work together and uh, now the 360 degree recovery is broken down into you know three sub areas we've got the muscle growth chamber the your support squad and active recharge so we're going to kind of talk a little bit about each one of these and first one is <clears throat> what I've called the muscle growth chamber aka your bed so muscle if you may or may not know but your body builds muscles and your muscles grow when you are asleep that's when your body's releasing the hormones IGF testosterone growth hormone that's when those are all let out to repair and build the muscles in the gym. See, a lot of guys, <clears throat> excuse me, mistakenly think that training is where you build the muscle, and that's not that's not even close to true. Lifting and dynamic strength training in the gym is what puts stress on the muscle and breaks it down, and the muscle rebuilds and repairs itself when you are sleeping, and it does that with the assistance of hormones from your body. And the kind of catch or caveat there is. This only happens when you've slept long enough. You know, if you're only sleeping five hours, you're not giving your body enough time to release those hormones because those come out later in your sleep cycle. So you want to shoot for a bare minimum of six hours, but that's not really cutting it. If you're really serious about growing muscle, you want to get the, the full eight hours. I remember reading an article on Henry Cavill training which is the guy who played Superman in, in Man of Steel, and it was talking about how he trained and put on muscle mass for that because he was kind of a tall, skinny dude. And the trainer told him, he said the hardest advice for him to follow from the trainer was not had nothing to do with lifting. It was he was ordered that he had to sleep nine hours a night. Nine hours, so not even eight, nine hours, because the trainer knew, as all good trainers know, that your muscles grow when you sleep, and so they've... To, for, for Henry to put on that muscle faster, he had to really change his schedule so that he could sleep for nine hours. And, you know, for a lot of us, that's not exactly an exciting idea is to sit there and spend nine hours of sleep because we've got so many things we're trying to do throughout the day. And so part of, <clears throat> part of how we tack this is fixing the mindset. And so we reframe it to, you know, you're not going to bed, but, you know, you're going to your muscle growth chamber. And, you know, that sounds a little cheesy, maybe it's a little hokey, but hey, sometimes you got to play these kind of games with yourself so that you can get done what you need to get done. And when you reframe it like that, you, know, you start asking yourself, okay, well, how can I make 
this a more enjoyable place for, for me to sleep? How can I make it more exciting for me to go to bed? You know, see, most guys just say, okay, I'll try and sleep more, and that's that's the end. <laughs> that's where the thought process ends, and that's why most guys don't get results, and that's why most guys don't have Spartan bodies, okay? It's not a statement of value. It's just they're lazy, and they don't think for enough, for further out enough. So what we're going to do is go way beyond that and say, okay, instead of asking how can, you know, instead of telling ourselves, all right, I'll sleep a little more, We'll say, ask, how can I make it more exciting to go to bed? And if it's more exciting to go to bed, you're going to go to bed earlier and you're going to sleep more. Okay, so with that question, there's tons of options. You know, one, you can get a whole new bed. I mean, this is an area where, you know, if you, that you spend most of your time, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hours a night over and over again. So this is something that you don't want to skimp on. You want to save up and get a nice bed. You know, I've got a sleep sleep number bed. I love it. Um, you know, I'd look at something like that or Tempur-Pedic or whatever. But maybe that's where you start. Now, maybe not. You know, maybe you've got a nice bed. Okay, still plenty of other things we can do. You know, you can look at a nice mattress topper. You can put like a memory foam topper to make it a little more comfortable. You could look at getting new sheets to make that more comfortable. New pillows, maybe some Tempur-Pedic pillows or some other type of pillow. You know, see all these little, little nuances and details that you can change that make all of a sudden now going to bed a little bit more exciting. Uh, you can get something called a Fitbit tracker or I think Nike and there's a couple other ones out there but this is a little device that you put on your wrist and it tracks how long you sleep for. So now you've got a visual representation of data to see how much you are or aren't sleeping and again that's changing changing your awareness and how you perceive going to bed which in turn will ideally induce you to sleep more and build more muscle. So that's the the muscle growth chamber. The next one is the support squad. And just like NASCAR drivers have a pit crew to keep their car running, you know, you have a pit crew that you want to be as selective about who 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 is in and who is out of it uh, in terms of keeping your body running. Now you're the driver, but you have other people that you that you need to count on and should count on to help you take the best care of your body. And first, obviously, is one that you usually should go to, which is your doctor. And you, know, you always wanna be, you, know, you don't wanna just go to the doctor when you're sick, you wanna do your checkups and get blood work done so that you are more aware of your body and, and where you are with your health. And something I'll just throw out there with doctors, you know, you, you want to do your research now. You know, it's not like just because they're a doctor doesn't mean that they're the right doctor for you. They, they have different specialties and backgrounds and you know, a doctor who's seeing people from all ends of the spectrum may not be able to provide you with as much relevant advice versus a sports doctor or a doctor who's seeing mostly people who are working out or mostly people of your age. So when you just, you know, when you look at a doctor that's a little more specialized, you may get better care. And, and especially if you look at, too, like some wellness doctors who are maybe not in the traditional medicine sense, but they they're look like the alternative health. Uh, it's always good to just explore those options, and if you've been going to the same doctor for year after year, you know, it never hurts to go to another one and just get a different opinion and see what the feedback is. Um, because again, it's your responsibility. Yes, the doctor can look at you and give you his best information uh, or diagnosis based on your current health or whatever, but it's it's your responsibility to select the doctor and go to the doctor and act or not act on the results. Um, so just want to make, make you aware that you have that power to choose who you go to and you should use it so that you're getting the best care because this is part of your support squad that you build. And you know, you also want to go a step beyond just medical care and look into wellness and preventative care. And that's like the first thing you should look at doing is getting a massage, uh, at a minimum once every quarter, if not every month. And this is an area where some people, you know, you may feel uncomfortable, like, oh, I don't, you know, that's that may be expensive. I feel guilty for spending that money on myself for a massage because it's kind of position is like, you know, luxury item or something like that. But, you know, that's not the case. You know, it's it's going to prevent help prevent a lot of issues down the road. Uh, you know, when you're again, when you're training, you're putting a lot of stress on your muscles and tearing them down and building back up. And just throughout that process. They're getting knots and, and all other kinds of who knows what's going on. And, and a good masseuse will spot those from a mile away when they're giving you a massage and they'll work all that out and get rid of the toxins. I mean, the benefits are night and day. And, I, and you definitely want to, at a minimum, once a quarter, get a massage, 
again, this is part of having the strength, internal strength to know that you need to take care of yourself. And in order to do that, you do need to lean on other people's skill sets to help you keep your body in, in prime condition. So getting a massage is not a, it's not frivolous spending at all. It's an investment in yourself uh, as a payoff to the training that you're doing, but also just helping with circulation. And I mean, the, the benefits are endless. I don't need to go through them here. You can hop on Google and they'll, they'll be happy to tell you. You also you know, may want to look at and consider going to a chiropractor, uh, getting acne puncture done, because part of it is, again, this is a journey. It never ends. And part of the journey is just awareness of your body and how your body responds to different treatments, how you feel. And you're just not going to know if you're closed off and you're only going to one particular doctor if you're sick. You know, that's just not, that's not a, that's not a venue for growth. You know, if you want growth and you want to improve, which changing your body is a form of growth, uh, you also have to be open to and looking at other areas of wellness in your life. And so I would, again, suggest you check out a chiropractor and acupuncture and, you know, you don't have to go to both, but just go to one and see how the experience is and see how you feel. Because part of this is, again, getting that awareness of yourself and your body that nobody else can give you except for you by going through certain particular experiences that you choose to um, put yourself through. So that's the, the support squad. And then the last is active recharge. And when we're training, especially now, not so much for the newer guys, but this is more for the for the moderate to advanced guys. Uh, you know, when you get all wrapped up in the training, uh, especially if you're following a proper progression system where you see progress every week, like I teach in AspartanRises.com, you can easily get sucked into it and just be, you know, what's next? What's next? What's next? Let's go, 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 go. And it's very, very important. Uh, that you have the strength and the discipline to take time out and off of, off from training. You know, this is both mentally and physically because your body needs it. You need it mentally and even, and you don't want it to get to the point where you're like breaking down and burning out from training because you never gave yourself the active recharge that you need. And what that is, is, you know, you just take a week off where you don't train. You just have a week off or you don't train. You don't have to go crazy on your on your food intake, but maybe you, you go a little more lax on the food intake, enjoy some foods that you had been perhaps uh, holding out on or skipping over because they're not as healthy, and you just really celebrate and enjoy that week for what it is. It's a, it's a, re a recharging week, and you, you know, schedule, you can also schedule activities, you know, fun little mini vacations or hiking trips or whatever, things that you might normally might not do just as a way to recharge and refresh yourself for the next segment of training that will come after that. And if you, and these breaks can be tough to do because you feel like now I need to keep working. I got this going. I need, I, I don't want to stop now. And, and it's really a stronger man who's able to say, okay, I will take this time out here to give myself this recharge because even though I don't feel sore, I don't feel mentally tired, I know that by doing this preventative work now, I will avoid a lot of hardships and trouble down the road by not doing it. So that's, again, something that you want to consider. And it goes into more detail in AspartanRises.com, but either way, you want to make sure that you're scheduling and setting time out aside for that. Now, no matter how much recovery you get or don't get, always remember, never retreat, Never surrender and keep moving forward.